Hey everybody, welcome back. My name's Bill, this is Yo-Yo Tech. Today we're gonna talk about some ways in OpenHab to create rules that help you turn your lights on, but more importantly, control how they turn off and when they don't turn off. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at some awesome rules in OpenHab to help control your lighting. But before we get started, for those of you who haven't already, take a minute, move your mouse down just below that window, and if you so desire, smash it down on that subscribe button. We're trying to grow this community, and I need to ask you to please subscribe. One of the areas that most people start out with in home automation is lighting. Lighting is simple because you can use light bulbs to plug in, light switches, all sorts of different ways to do it, and it's also one of the most common things you want to do. Now, getting lights to turn on is pretty simple. The challenge sometimes becomes getting lights to turn off, or even more importantly, making sure your lights don't turn off when you don't want them to. And what do I mean about that? Well, I have a lot of motion sensors set up around the house that turn lights on and off automatically, and that all works fairly well. The challenge comes is when you're in a room and for whatever reason you don't walk around, maybe you're sitting at a desk doing some work, you're working away at your computer, you're watching TV, and all of a sudden the lights all turn off because it hasn't detected motion. So what I'm going to show you today is some simple ways that I detect the presence in the room still or update my rules to make sure that they're not turning off. And none of these are perfect, and if you guys have suggestions, I'd love it if you leave it in the comments below. But these are just a few ideas that I have and that I use that have helped improve it. One of the greatest things with home automation when it works is everything's just automatic and people almost don't notice it. But definitely one of the things that goes wrong with all of that is when things start turning off and they're not supposed to. So let's take a look at some of the rules that I use. One of the ways that I do this in uh, OpenHab, Home Assistant, Smart Things is pretty much all the same idea and that is I set up variables to monitor the last time action or motion happened. So for example all of my motion detectors I've set up a variable within the system to say if someone has motion save the last time that motion happened and I save it within a variable. And the reason I do this rather than using timers is it gives me absolute time to work with. So a lot of people prefer to use timers within the system and this is where they essentially say when there's motion start a timer that counts down and when it gets to zero if there's been no more motion turn the light off. But the problem with that is if anything interrupts that process or if you want to interrupt that process, or if you even just want to know how much time is left in that process, it can become much more difficult to figure out. So for me, I set variables and I store the last time it happened. Now the benefit of doing that is, I can constantly check the system and I can say, if, and I check my different rules to say, if this light has been, if it's been more than 10 minutes since there's been any motion in this room, turn off this light. or do something else for that matter. The benefit comes when I want to manipulate that time. So rather than go and change my rules, let's say I'm in the basement and I've come down and the motion detector has turned on the lights and I'm watching TV. And what I do is I then timestamp when that happened. And that allows my off rules or my rules that turn off after a period of time I check that every minute and I say if it's been more than a specific amount of time, in this example let's say 10 minutes, then shut off all the lights. So now the question comes, what happens when I come downstairs and I, lights turn on automatically and I want them on and I'm watching TV? Well I'm not moving around, I'm not doing that motion, so when 10 minutes comes around, what do I do? Well it's pretty simple, I have a rule within that rule that says if the TV is on, reset the motion stamp just as if we just had more motion. So what that is essentially doing is it's adding 10 minutes every time it tries to shut off but the TV is turned on saying there's someone in the room, someone's watching TV, don't turn off. And what that does for me is it allows me to extend the period of time that the lights stay on without needing to change the, change the amount of time till they turn off, not needing to worry about resetting or clearing a timer. It just simply manipulates the amount of time since the last motion and keeps them on. That way when I turn the TV off I actually leave the room 
And then when within 10 minutes everything goes back to normal and the lights just turn off. The other benefit to this is obviously with OpenHab or other systems, you're very often resetting your system. Maybe you're doing something on it, you want to restart it, who knows what that might be. But when you do do it, you want everything to fall back in line and just work the way it's supposed to be. You don't want timers that were created to turn things off because the system's been reset or they're now lost. When that system boots back up, everything's going to go back in and check just like it was. All your rules are going to run and they're going to say, hey, the basement lights, has it been more than 10 minutes since the last motion? Well, yes, it has, and the lights are on. Well, turn them off. So everything just goes back to normal automatically. Now, the other way that I do this, let's say I'm in a bedroom, and somebody is sitting working at a desk in there. There's no TV. There's nothing else. There's nothing we can do. The easiest way I've come up to solve this one is if a light goes off, and then it turns back on within a very short period of time, I can actually extend the amount of time until that light turns off again. So rather than try to change things, rather than again to disable that rule, I extend the time. So what I do is I hit that motion timestamp and I actually set it to 10 minutes or 15 or 20, whatever that room I feel it needs into the future. So that way my 10 minute rule is going to check every minute, just like normal, nothing's gonna change. But essentially what I've done is I've added say 15 minutes to that. So that's not actually going to turn off because zero will take 15 minutes and then the added 10 minutes there. So it's actually going to be 25 minutes before it tries to shut off again. And this way what happens is it actually stretches the amount of time again without changing anything fundamentally in the system. The worst case scenario here is if I were to leave the room immediately, it's now 25 minutes until the lights turn off. So it just stretches the time, but it makes sure everything keeps working. So guys, these are not necessarily the best or the only way to do it. They're just ways that I've come up with that have helped me solve some of the common problems that I have with automation. But guys, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you're enjoying these tips and tricks. Got more videos to come. Like I said, if you haven't already, please subscribe. If you want to be notified when I come out with new videos, hit the little bell down below. That'll make sure you're the first one to know. Otherwise, guys, have a fantastic week and we'll see you in the next video.